have a long life, uh, could be completely satisfied. All the outer and inner hindrances grant such inspiration. So first we'll do the uh, ceremony for um, bodhicitta. So I have nothing special to see. It. And so averting the birth into lower realms and leading one to higher realms. So as uh, Shantideva makes prayer to Bodhicitta and says that um, which intelligent one would uh, feel despair to ride the horse of Bodhicitta which leads one from bliss to bliss. So the, um, the high way that leads one to the omniscient state of Buddhahood is bodhicitta. And so just as this prayer is made, may I generate bodhicitta. Um, we have found this human life now. And if we train our mind through reason, And this bodhicitta, which holds others more dearer, dearer than oneself, if we could train in this and transform our mind gradually, then this bodhicitta, by which someone gain, gains the name bodhicitta, so this bodhicitta can be attained by us through training. And so, but Buddha and all the great masters of the past have found a human body, and the Buddha himself actually assumed the, um, the Buddha's deed of atta attaining enlightenment uh, in this human body. And so he used this human, uh, the human body that he found uh, in the correct way. And his, the followers of the Buddha also did the same. So uh, regarding us, unless we do train ourselves, <coughs> apply ourselves to the path, um, we have also found the same body as the Buddha Shakyamuni himself and the master as Nagarjuna Sangha and so forth the same body, so, and then we have met with the Dharma, and it's, <coughs> it's very difficult to find this human body and again and again. So having found this kind of human life, precious human life, and meeting with the right uh, practitioners and meeting with the, the right Dharma, so we have all, all the right uh, facilities So, therefore, there is nothing greater that we could actually cultivate than bodhicitta in such when we have all these facilities and conditions. So, we have gone through the, uh, the benefits and the how to train in bodhicitta in Lamrim Chemu and la, the Middle and Lamrim. And so, just uh, have a clear idea of bodhicitta, its benefits, and how to train in them uh, in your mind. And here, we, if we, if you could uh, generate bodhicitta, uh, no, uh, generate bodhicitta with a, in front of a guru, then you have a witness for going through this. Uh, you'll be able to say, oh, at such and such time, I, have, I, I actually took this bodhicitta and made the pledge to keep it. And uh, you'll also uh, feel encouraged to uh, practice and cultivate bodhicitta and do the practices likewise. So, so, as far as I'm concerned, I have uh, 
uh, uh, took bodhicitta, generated bodhicitta from Tibhichitya Rinpoche in Tibet, uh, based on the Lamrim by the fifth Dalai Lama, and uh, also the, the path of bliss. So, of course, as child, uh, as a child, and I have taken uh, a generated bodhicitta, and uh, I also took uh, bodhicitta, uh, participated in bodhicitta ceremony with Tijan Rambuchi and Ling Rambuchi. So uh, I requested Ling Rinpoche to take the bodhis, uh, generate bodhicitta uh, in front of uh, inside the Mahabodhi stupa in Bodh Gaya, and then after he took it, then I took uh, bodhicitta from him as well. And so I usually uh, make an earnest uh, 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 determination uh, in generating bodhicitta on a daily basis. So if we have time, uh, we could do the bodhicitta ceremony. Um, so if I have time, I do the bodhicitta, bodhicitta ceremony uh, and as it is set in the uh, basic path. Uh, of bodhisattvas, and also take the tantric vows. So today we'll do the ceremony for aspiring bodhicitta uh, based on the ritual. As it is said, in the Abhisamaya Lamkara and Mahayana Uttara Tantra by Maitreya, just imagine the Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni uh, in uh, person here. So as Lama Tsongkhapa says, just uh, having, uh, forming the uh, image of a Buddha in my mind gives me a great uh, joy uh, and relief. <coughs> and so you should imagine Buddha Shakyamuni actually in person and also the great bodhisattvas such as Ma Maitreya, Jamanjushri, um, the Samandabhadra and so forth, the, the, who are in the form of deities. So, we, of course, uh, there are these great texts written by Maitreya and Maitreya and Nagarjuna, then Aryadeva, his uh, spiritual son, Buddha Palita, and Bhava Viveka, Chandrakirti, Shanti Deva, the great Bodhisattva, and so forth, who are the holder of the profound uh, lineage of the middle way, and also imagine Shandarakshita. And then we have the extensive path lineage, beginning with uh, Asanga, Vasubandhu, and then also we have Muktisena, we have Muktisena Garmin, and so forth, and also Dignaga, the master Dignaga, Dharmakirti. In other words, the great masters of the great Nalanda, the great institution which actually upheld the uh, Buddha Dharma for centuries. Uh, and then during the later dissemination of Buddhism in Tibet, when the Buddhism was revived inside Tibet, and the Indian masters like Master Adisha, who came to Tibet. And similarly, we have during the, the masters such as um, Guru Padma Sambhava during the earlier dissemination of Buddhism in Tibet. And then the great masters of the Nyingma tradition. 
and Indian masters also, the great Masidas like Saraha, Drambipa, Delopa, Naropa, and uh, their lineage holders. And so we also imagine the, uh, the Nyingma masters and uh, Gadam masters. And then the five patriarchs of the Sakya lineage, the five, and also the Lamde uh, masters of uh, Sokshi and Lobshi, and then the Kagyu masters. And within the Kagyu, we all usually uh, there are the four major and eight minor ones, so the masters of all these traditions, and then also the Chonangpa tradition. Masters of the Chonang tradition, and then the, in the, within the Gadam lineage, we have the Gadambas of the Lamrim lineage, scholastic lineage, and also instruction lineage. And then in the new Gadam tradition, we have Master Tsongkhapa and uh, the, the, the uh, traditions coming from the Jitin Sherab Singhi and uh, uh, the Segu lineage, and then your own. Imagine your own masters from with whom you have direct uh, dharma connection, and similarly, imagine the great bodhisattvas who are on the bodhisattva grounds. And also, if it's convenient for you to imagine, you should also com um, imagine the. Uh, deities of the uh, Tantra classes. When we talk about bodhicitta, generating bodhicitta, you should uh, uh, particularly think about those beings who are without protector, without help, who, even though they want happiness, they uh, destroy the cause of happiness as if destroying their own enemies and who even though want, do not want suffering they actually run after the causes of suffering and so when you think about this condition of all sentient beings it makes you feel sorrow doesn't it so although you, they don't want happen, uh, suffering they actually make their practice what is actually the cause of suffering and so all these poor sentient beings we ha with whom, of course, we have connection, karmic connections. So as I said before, if you uh, reduce selfishness and dedicate yourself for the well-being of others, then you will actually fulfill your own goal. So therefore, bodhicitta, which actually um, is the path which leads you to omniscience, which so if you if you can if you actually can dedicate yourself, this is what you did, should dedicate yourself to, and if you have some intelligence, you should actually apply that uh, to this bodhicitta. So. Of course, our life is very uncertain. And so what you should think is to make this life meaningful. So just to actually remind yourself of all this, um, you should imagine all the uh, sentient beings around you and uh, imagine them, these the six types of uh, sentient beings, uh, actually undergoing their own respective sufferings of hell, realm, and so forth, although you may imagine them as human, in the form of humans. And so, for this bodhicitta, the generation of bodhicitta will uh, do the seven limb practice. So, um, if we could, we should, we should uh, do it uh, by using the text of uh, Chandideva. Oh,
So as an offering, uh, making offering, prayer for making offerings, we'll do the, uh, the part, the prayer which is done exclusively in, in the context of Sutrayana.
So the verse, literally, uh, if I translate, uh, says this um, edible is offering a, a talk which has um, hundred tastes and attract is attractive. offer this to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas with uh, great devotion and may through this merit um, all sentient beings enjoy the, um, the food of concentration. So this is part of the <coughs> so we do what we did was part of the um, bodhicitta ceremony for which we have to collect merit and uh, purify negativities so now fourth bodhicitta a generation of bodhicitta um, let's say a mandala offering one verse mandala offering This ground anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, and donned with Mount Meru for continents, sun and moon. I imagine as a Buddha bit. Buddha land and offer to you, may all beings enjoy in this pure land. Radu Kembo, Abbot Niki. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. By the virtuous merit created by listening to the Dharma, may I attain the state of Buddha to benefit all my creators. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. May by the virtuous merit created by listening to the Tom, may I attain Buddhahood to benefit all migrators. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. By the virtuous merit created by listening to the Tom, may I attain Buddhahood to benefit all migrators. Jangan 
I pay homage to the Gautama, who out of his compassion <coughs> taught the Holy Dharma to realize of yeah, yeah, all yeah. long views. So, uh, regarding, the, I have already explained about the uh, benefits of Bodhicitta. So mainly what we should do is to train our minds in Bodhicitta in stages. So whatever uh, spiritual realization you uh, develop, first of all, you have to know it and then understand its meaning and then give thought to it. Firstly, you may have some kind of a, a superficial understanding, but then you will develop, by give, reflecting on it, you will develop uh, understanding drawn through uh, reflection. You gain certitude in it. When that happens, then you, uh, you reach a stage where you feel that you could actually um, develop that experience within yourself. And then, if it is an experience that has to be actually uh, become the, the, the uh, subjective aspect of the uh, experience, you actually uh, d develop that compassion and so forth, and like that. Whereas if uh, you actually just take on the aspect of an object and actually gain insight into it, for example, uh, experience of emptiness, then of course these gradually develop through your uh, training of your mind. And after having developed uh, the experience which depends on some effort, then when you further push yourself uh, by accumulating uh, merit and purifying negativities, negativities and um, then think about those practices. And then the experience will rather uh, come to you rather effortlessly whether developing compassion and so forth, which are the subjective aspects of their experience, and or developing the, uh, the objective aspects of the experience of the objective aspects of those practices. So this happens. So with regard to generating bodhicitta, Jerem Butcher says, you should first understand, know the benefits, the great qualities of it, and then put effort. So after having put some effort and you are almost able to uh, be set my, your mind on it, then um, you should, uh, you should, uh, you, if when you begin to have the experience of bodhicitta, then uh, Jerembuja says you have to take, a, a, um, pl uh, make a pledge to keep this aspira aspiring bodhicitta. So th um, unless uh, you are, you have bad knees, the, the rest of you, please uh, kneel on your right knee or crouch. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the master, myself, is like a messenger, mainly, as I introduced earlier, you should imagine all the lineage masters, from Buddha Shakyamuni down to your own root gurus, from whom, with whom you have uh, direct Dharma connection. And then we have Chinese uh, people from uh, Chinese audience here. And you can imagine Chinese masters like Tang San Ma, uh, Lama, 
And then, uh, then the other countries like Vietnam and Japanese and Japan, uh, where the Buddhism spread mainly from uh, through China, and uh, there may be cases where uh, Buddhism um, teachings spread directly from India, as uh, some say. And so imagine all the great masters of your own countries. Uh, of the Dharma. Please repeat this. Re Master, please think of me. Just as all the Buddhas. Just as the former perfect Buddhas who had the Thagatas and our hearts and the great bodhisattvas on the high levels initially generated spirit of unexcelled perfect enlightenment please O oh master help me please say your name here help me to generate the spirit of unexcelled perfect enlightenment Please help me to generate the spirit of unexcelled perfect enlightenment. Help me to generate the spirit of unexcelled perfect enlightenment. So this is done. Next is the actual generation of bodhicitta. So before uh, doing that, you should have uh, taken. Uh, you should take refuge in the unique Mahayana way of taking refuge, where you take refuge in the uh, resultant Buddhahood and the Sangha, you should remind yourself of the Buddha's body, speech, and mind, the qualities of the Buddha's speech and body, speech, and mind. As Maitreya says, we all have, we uh, actually, um, the, the enlightened um, body of the Buddha's radiate, as he says. So what that means is all the enlightened activities of the Buddhist Buddhas actually radiate towards the sentient beings. Um, another interpretation is that we have the potential for, uh, for attaining the four Buddha bodies. The substantial course is there within ourselves. So this uh, so what Maitreya says in uh, uh, Mahayana Uttara Tantra, this verse is similarly, the, the same verse is in uh, Abhisamaya Alamkara as well. So there may be two different interpretations uh, on, of the same verse. But, uh, that what this means is that we have the potential, the seed for uh, enlightenment, the, to attain the full four Buddha bodies. Uh, tathagata. So there is no samsara and nirvana. So what is nirvana is just as the mind becomes the cause for samsara, uh, where we have the environment and the livings, uh, li uh, beings living in it, likewise, when uh, the mind is free of all these defilements that are within our mind stream, then you reach nirvana. So in other words, on the basis of the Buddha nature, in terms of the Buddha nature, there is no difference between the, uh, the uh, emptiness of the mind of sentient beings and the Buddhas. So you can think in terms of the Buddha nature, or you can think in terms of the potential that we have, uh, the seed for the four Buddha bodies, which is according to the highest Yoga Tantra. So in other words, we have the potential or the seed for attaining four Buddha bodies. And therefore, what we are seeking from the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas is that we wish to 
actually become like you, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, by overcoming all the defilements that cover the Buddha nature that I have, and so that I may realize the Mahayana path, the true path and true cessation of the Mahayana path, thereby becoming a Mahayana Sangha, and through the, uh, that, I ultimately to become a Buddha. And therefore, since we ha all have all the Buddha, uh, we all have the Buddha nature, we, unlike others, we have met with the conditions to actualize or to make the, this potential manifest to realize the goal that we seek. And therefore, under such condition, you take refuge in the Buddha, Buddha, Buddha Dharma, and Sangha. You know, oh, Master, please listen to me. Say this, I, I say your name. From now until I reach the heart of enlightenment, go for refuge to the Bhagavan Buddhas, supreme among beings. Oh, Master, please listen to me. I, I say your name from now until I reach the heart of enlightenment. Go for refuge to the best of teachings, the teachings of peace free from attachment. Oh, Master, please listen to me. I say your name here from now until I reach the heart of enlightenment. Go for refuge to the best of assemblies. The uh, member of the community of common, uh, bodhisatt noble bodhisattvas who are irreversible. So this has to be repeated two more times. Oh, Master. Please listen to me. I say your name here from now until I reach the heart of enlightenment. Go for refuge to the Bhagavan Buddha, supreme among beings. O oh Master, please listen to me. I, from now on until I reach the heart of enlightenment, go for refuge to the best of the teachings, the teaching of peace fr free from attachment. O oh Master, please listen to me. I. Say your name. From now until I reach the heart of enlightenment, go for refuge to the best of assemblies, the members of the community of noble bodhisattvas who are reversible. O oh Master, please listen to me. I, from now until I reach the heart of enlightenment, go for refuge to the Bhagwan Buddhas, supreme amongst beings. O oh Master, please listen to me. I, from now until I reach the heart of enlightenment, go for refuge to the best of teachings, the teachings of peace free from attachment. Oh, Master, please listen to me. I, from now until I reach the heart of enlightenment, go for refuge to the best of assemblies, the members of the community of noble bodhisattvas who are irreversible. So this is uh, the unique way of taking refuge, uh, according to the Mahayana tradition, the unique Mahayana way of taking refuge. So let's see this verse together. Please sit. So imagine all the merit fields. Let's see this prayer the, through the prostration, making offering, confession, and rejoicing. Uh, requesting not to pass away and the will of the Dharma. May the merit gain through this add to from my for me to attain the perfect enlightenment. So whatever merit I have gained through making prostrations, making offerings, confession, uh, rejoicing and requesting the Buddha's not to pass away and the will of the Dharma. Uh, dedicated for my enlightenment, perfect enlightenment. So, so with regard to bodhicitta, all happiness in the world come from wishing others to be happy, all suffering come from wishing oneself to be happy. So this is something we do not uh, uh, need to prove through reasonings. This is something that we know from our own day-to-day -day life. It's experience. So if you think, if you, ha if you are dedicated, totally dedicated to the welfare of others and beings, then there is no uh, reason to feel fear and anxiety 
which mostly come from uh, in relation to other sentient beings. For example, if uh, with regard to jealousy, you are not jealous uh, in relation to something that is inanimate, but in relation to something that is animate. And the sense of competition also happens in relation to other sentient beings. And when you have someone with whom you have jealousy and competitive feeling, then you have anxiety and fear. And accordingly, then you, what you do is you harm them, you bully them, you um, uh, deceive them, and you also indulge in hypocrisy. So these are all because of selfish motive, holding on to yourself as more important than others. So, and this is because of holding oneself as dearer than others. So of course, you are dear and precious, but if you could actually dedicate yourself uh, yourself for uh, to attain Buddhahood, then you sh what you should do is actually uh, de develop uh, love and compassion towards others. So otherwise, you engage in all these non-virtuous, the, the ten non-virtuous actions of killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, committing sexual misconduct, and uh, lying and so forth. So as Shandideva says, you should engage in the secret practices. This is uh, uh, what he means. The bodhisattvas are very wise people to, who, are a, uh, who actually uh, are able to fulfill their own interest as well as the interest of others. Whereas we do the opposite. Although we want happiness, we actually create causes for suffering. So it's like voluntarily uh, wishing uh, to have ha suffering. <laughs> so what the uh, Shantideva says, what needs is there to say more. Just look at the difference between the, uh, ch the childish who uh, think of only themselves and the Buddhas. So the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and so forth have become are the objects of refuge for us because they dedicated themselves for the well-being of others and beings like us. And therefore, they have uh, attained the Mahayana um, true cessation uh, by applying the true path of Mahayana and became Mahayana Sangha and ultimately uh, becoming the Buddha, Mahayana. Um, so it is the bodhicitta, which is the root of all these attainments, uh, ultimate attainment of Buddhahood. As in Lama Chaba it says, may I be able to in equalize and exchange myself and others by understanding the childish manner of uh, selfishness, engaging in selfish uh, conduct, and the, uh, the Buddhas who, ded who have dedicated themselves for the well-being of others. So imagine that uh, you are going to take part in this bodhisattva, bodhicitta ceremony in front of all the uh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that you have imagined in the space before you and you have imagined that you are here uh, taking it from the Lama who is serving as the messenger of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and all of them are witness to your uh, generating uh, Bodhicitta uh, through this ceremony. So please kneel on your right knee. Uh, 
So with regard to these lines, I will liberate all beings who are not liberated. I will um, free all who are not freed, and I will relieve those not relieved, without relief. So an easier un interpretation of this is Just as Lama Tsongkhapa's three principal uh, aspects of the path says, the sentient beings are swept um, by the powerful currents of the four rivers, which refer to the suffering of suffering, uh, from which the uh, vehicles of uh, humans and deities lead you out of this kind of suffering. <laughs> so the vehicle of humans and deities actually can lead us out of the sufferings of uh, change and the suffering of pain. So that which, but it cannot uh, lead us out of the uh, the conditioning suffering. So unless you actually stop the course leading to this third type of suffering, and you will not be liberated. And therefore, um, uh, I will free all beings, living beings who are not free. It refers to this. And then I will relieve those without relief. So those who are not relieved through, not relieved through the, uh, I will relieve those who are not relieved through the Mahayana path. And then the last line, I will cause to reach Nirvana, those who have not reached it yet. So what this refers to is leading all sentient beings to be free from the subtlest cognitive obscuration, obscuration to knowledge, the subtlest obscuration to knowledge, which can be only, uh, which is only possible through the highest yoga tantra path. And so you are saying, I will cause to reach the nirvana, reach nirvana, the complete nirvana, those who have not reached it, through the highest yoga tantra, which actually puts an end to this subtlest obscuration to knowledge. So to make this life of humans. Oi. I'm sorry I can't hear his holiness. So to serve all sentient beings and to attain Buddhahood by taking the first step to this, please repeat these lines. O oh, Masters, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who reside in the ten directions, please listen to me. By means of my virtuous reads in the roots in the nature of generosity, ethics and meditation, which I say your name in this and all other lives cultivated and joined others to cultivate or rejoiced in the cultivation of I say your name will generate the spirit of great unexalt perfect enlightenment from now until I reach the heart of enlightenment. Just as the earlier perfect Buddhas who are Arhats and Tathagatas the, and the great Bodhisattvas who recite on the high levels generated the spirit of unexalt perfect enlightenment. This, this. I will liberate all living beings who are not liberated. I will free all who are not freed. I will relieve those without relief. I will cause to reach the complete nirvana 
those who have not reached it. Please repeat it for a second time. All Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who reside in the ten directions, please listen to me. By means of my virtuous deeds in the nature of generosity, ethics, or meditation, which I, say your name, in this and all other lives cultivated and joined others to cultivate or rejoiced in the cultivation of, I, I, say your name, will generate the spirit of great, unexcelled, perfect enlightenment from now until I reach the heart of enlightenment, just as the earlier Buddhas, perfect Buddhas, who are Arhats and Tathagatas, and the great Bodhisattvas who reside on the high levels, generated the spirit of unexcelled, perfect enlightenment. I will liberate all living beings who are not liberated. I will free all living beings who are not freed. I will relieve those without relief. I will cause to reach nirvana those who have not reached it. So, at the end of the third repetition now, of when you say, I will cause to reach the nirvana, or when you say, I will generate the spirit of great, unexcelled, perfect enlightenment. Having generated uh, this bodhicitta, asper aspiring bodhicitta, then you make the pledge that you will uh, keep it forever. So there may not be people here, perhaps, who think that, oh, it may not be it may not be possible for them to keep this kind of pledge to keep the aspiring bodhicitta. In case you feel that you are not courageous enough to keep that pledge, then you will say you could just uh, uh, take or generate bodhicitta. In any case, you will uh, be taking bodhisattva vows later, and therefore, in order to do that, you should have bodhis uh, aspiring bodhicitta. So please repeat it for the first time. All Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who reside in the Ten Directions, please listen to me. Master, please listen to me. By means of my virtuous deeds in the nature of generosity, ethics, and meditation, which I say your name in this and all other lives cultivated and joined others to cultivate and rejoiced in the cultivation of I say your name here I will generate the spirit of great unexcelled perfect enlightenment from now until the, I reach the heart of enlightenment just as the earlier Buddhas perfect Buddhas who are our hearts and Tathagatas and the Tathagata and the great bodhisattvas who reside on the high levels generated the body the spirit of unexcelled perfect enlightenment i will liberate all living beings who are not liberated i will free all living beings who are not freed i will relieve those without relief i will cause to reach the complete liberation those who have not reached it yet Please. Please repeat, may bodhicitta, so with this we have finished with the generation of bodhicitta, as bodhisattva, Shandideva's bodhisattva charya avatar says, Today my life has borne fruit. I have attained an unexcelled human existence. Today I am born into the Buddha's family, and now I have become a Buddha's child. In the Sutra of Nankara, there is mention of certain Buddhas and Bodhisattvas having generated Bodhicitta. Uh, in such and such way. So for us also, by taking part in this ceremony and generating bodhicitta, we are actually setting ourselves onto the path um, leading from the path of accumulation up to the path of normal learning as indicated by the uh, Heart Sutra Mantra. 
that yeah, the gate gate para gate para some good body saw. So having generated this bodhicitta, you should actually try to preserve it. And if you are about to get angry, you should say, think that, oh, I have generated bodhicitta and therefore I should not get angry at others. Remind yourself of this ceremony. And uh, if you try, if you are about to deceive somebody, you should not do so by, th by reminding yourself of this. So unless you make some difference through in your uh, action, uh, merely by generating it will not help that much. And so on a daily, s on a daily basis, say the verse of taking refuge in bodhicitta, the usual verse, I, take, I go for refuge in the bodhis but, uh, until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And by the virtues of virtues merit created by generosity and so forth, may I attain Buddhahood to benefit all sentient beings. So, having uh, given you this Bodhisattva, the generation of bodhis uh, Bodhicitta, I have gained some uh, merit, and this will, of course, uh, become a cause for my long life as well and you have also gained much merits through uh, by generating bodhicitta and therefore as it is said that uh, the uh, those with merit are able to fulfill their goals and therefore if you make your prayer for my long life and uh, it will be uh, good So if you have this book on page 18, the prayer, so I will s <laughs> so someone is saying maybe I should lead the prayer, but then he says, no, 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 you are actually making this so long life offering to me, therefore you should start saying this prayer. So this is a prayer to the Buddha, which His Holiness wrote in 2005, when all the Tibetans made offering to uh, uh, adding towards the, uh, an offering, Tibetan public and the government made an offering to the Buddha statue in Bodh Gaya. Um, Offering of the crown protrusion uh, made of gold and uh, pure gold, and then robes, uh, monastic robes, to the Buddha statue. So this, uh, there is a homage to the Buddha, uh, which says that you have completed all the. Uh, great qualities of wisdom and compassion and you were appraised like a white lotus um, and you have shown the path of dependent origination that you have given the teaching of uh, dependent origination which actually quells the uh, suffering and the origin of suffering of all sentient beings and therefore to you the guide or the leader of the shakya the shakyas and the guide of all sentient beings who is like this line of shakyas i uh, pay homage um, with my um, touching you with my crown and then says you have prophesied that um, the, your teaching will spread from uh, north to north which is north uh, from India it's uh, Tibet and uh, just as you have prophesied, the uh, teaching of your your teaching has spread all over Tibet, and uh, now it has become an ornament for the whole world, and we are fortunate for that. Um, despite this, now due to our karma, um, the uh, dharma has declined. And the, as well as the environment, the world, uh, and 
and we are in a pathetic situation and therefore it is time for you to uh, care of us to take care of us and therefore we the Tibetan humans as well as deities uh, very sincerely make our fervent prayers to you uh, together and we make offerings of the Tathagata's crown protrusion uh, from a pure gold and uh, we make offering of the arms bow to you and also pure clean and pure uh, uh, clothes to you. Next we have the prayer of the 17 Nalanda Masters. So with regard to the 17 Nalanda Masters, the, it was written by myself and I was quite inspired by their writings and uh, as we, as I also um, began uh, talking about the tradition of the Nalanda tradition, um, therefore, since we have a direct connection with them, study, uh, studying by studying the, the text, we'll say this prayer. line is a praise to the Buddha for teaching dependent origination. And then the second verse is a homage to uh, Master Nagarjuna, who actually clarified the teaching of uh, the, uh, the emptiness, meaning of emptiness based on the reasoning of dependent origination. And then next, uh, to, after that, it's a praise. The next verse is praise to Arya Deva, who is the spiritual, the chief spiritual son of Master Nagarjuna, who has crossed the ocean of uh, one's own and others' traditions, and who actually upheld all the teaching of the uh, Nagarjuna. And after him is Buddha um, Palita. who made clear the Nagarjuna's teaching of the um, dependent origination uh, in terms of meaning uh, that it is mere, uh, things are merely in name. And then after him comes praise to uh, Baba Viveka. And next is Chandrakirti, praise to Chandrakirti. And after that, Shandi Deva. And after Shandi Deva, it's a prayer to uh, Shandarakshita. And after Shandarakshita, comes a praise to uh, Kamalashila. Kamala Shila, after Kamala Shila is the prayer to Asanga and following him is uh, praise to Vasubandhu and then we have praises to uh, Dignaga, uh, Dhammakirti, Dignaga, Dhammakirti, Vimukti uh, Sena, Hari Bhadra, Shakya uh, Prabha, uh, no, uh, Guna Prabha and Shakya Prabha and then Master Atisha. So thus speaking of uh, prayers to these great crowning ornaments of scholars, um, who are the source of this wisdom. May my 
my man mind becomes spiritually matured and liberated. And by understanding the true truths, may I understand the uh, process of uh, the uh, how we uh, we are led into samsara and out of samsara through the uh, the four noble truths, the four truths of ori suffering, origin, and cessation and uh, path. And may the root of uh, uh, liberation uh, be planted within me. And renunciation, and then says by generating renunciation which is the freedom from suffering and its origin and by generating great compassion and the ungenuine bodhicitta and through the generation of cultivation of uh, uh, compassion may I uh, be uh, may I master the genuine bodhicitta so by uh, by studying, reflecting on the meaning, and by meditating on the teachings of these great uh, charioteers, the great masters, um, may I gain certitude in the uh, perfection vehicle as well as tantrayana. Uh, and easily uh, in all my lifetimes I uh, uphold the three trainings and may I re receive teachings on the Dharma and um, uphold the teachings and the practices and like those of the great masters and may I be able to serve the Dharma like them. May in all the monastic institutions uh, the uh, practices of uh, study, reflection and practice uh, uh, flourish and May they beautify this earth. And next, uh, so you, all of you, t uh, refer to me as Avalokiteshvara, as if uh, you are actually using some poetical rhetoric. But of course, I'm not a Avalokiteshvara, it's not possible. But from the time of the Buddha, since the time of the Buddha, uh, there were uh, great emanations of Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara in India and particularly in Tibet. And Tibet being the uh, special uh, land which uh, to be subdued by Avalokiteshvara. So I was born at a time when Tibet was going through a very critical uh, time. And so Avalokiteshvara's uh, emanations, such as the great kings of uh, Tibet, have been there. So I, ha of course, have uh, this uh, special connection with Avalokiteshvara. So I do not think that I am the reincarnation of the previous Dalai Lamas, but I can say that I have a very special karmic connection with them, and I have many indications of that. So Jindun Drup has written this prayer. He says that for the Tibetans, um, your kind, kindness has been unmatched. It's referring to the referring to Master Tsongkhapa. 
So, and, and the, uh, the first Dalai Lama makes this prayer to uh, to uphold and preserve the tradition of the Lama Tsongkhapa. So I too make the same. Uh, I have a, a close connection with the first Dalai Lama. So Gendrin Gyatso, the second Dalai Lama, was the uh, the abbot of Sera and Tepung and Ganden. Sera and Tepung. Um, so, according to the Yangba Church's biography of the second Dalai Lama, he was referred to as the a uh, non-sectarian uh, non -sectarian master of the Yellow Hat sect. So uh, the first, first, second Dalai Lama's parents, of course, were uh, practitioners of Mahamudra. And so he was uh, non-sectarian. He respected all the religious traditions, but the, but the traditions of Tibet, and um, practiced them. So similarly, I too have uh, respect. Uh, to, uh, wish to serve all the different traditions of Tibet, Tibetan Buddhist traditions. So by uh, what that means is to actually understand the different teachings of these traditions and also practice them. And through that, I can serve the, uh, all the Buddhist traditions of Tibet. And then the fifth Dalai Lama is well known to be non sectarian, practicing all the different traditions. And uh, has a special connection with the Nyingma tradition. So this, uh, we'll say this prayer. Uh, this is a prayer of the, the, the different reincarnations of Avalokiteshvara that appeared in India and Tibet. Incarnations or the previous incarnations of the Fort Dalai Lama. So, first it goes uh, through the supplication to the Buddha. the 36 uh, reincarnations of Avalokiteshvara that appeared in uh, India, and then the reincarnations of Avalokiteshvara who appeared in Tibet, such as those of the, the Dharma kings, the ten king, uh, ten king Dharma kings, and then 17 great uh, uh, scholar adepts. Lines of Dalai Lama, the line of uh, the Dalai Lamas. So the first one amongst the Indian reincarnations is said to be Jigden Wang Chuk, yeah, the, the uh, King Jigden Wang, and then uh, the, the child Kyo Nangwa and. Kyusel and Gebu Chagme, the Prince Chagme, uh, Gunduga and King Pake, uh, Dharma King Gunchokbang, Then the Bodhisattva Tebaten and Belsang, Teba Rakten and the King Lotepel, 
Tongju Godzin and Upasaka uh, Tsumpa and then the, the holder of Vinaya Rinchen Pel and then the child Dawa Rinchen uh, Ningpo and Pema Lotus and Wizard Cham Wizard Champa Sengeta Girls, uh, everybody sat the uh, uh, Bell. Okay, uh, Prince Dechok Bell. And Hai Gelbo. Then there are the Gendin Pell and Porang Raza. Okay, Sarchen. Rebong Tura and Gelpo Zuopa, uh, the shepherd, and then Brahman Trinchinch, and then Samden Sangpo, the uh, channel ground yogi. Solong uh, Gunduju and then King uh, Gebjin and the Lord or uh, the leader Tuklak Jin, Chigil the Dharma King Gewapel and then the first amongst the uh, reincarnations of Avalokiteshvara uh, in Tibet is the first the first king of Tibet. Nyati Temple. And then there are other kings like Esholek, Detu, Namshungzen, and Yongu Nyemeje, Nyemede, and Sapungzen. And then Totola, the king Totori Nyensen, at whose time the Dharma, Buddha Dharma, appeared in Tibet for the first time. And then Songzen Gampo, during whose time the uh, famous Jo uh, statue in Lhasa, in Chokang, was invited to Tibet. And also Joe Shakyamuni was also invited at that time and he started the Tibetan law and script. And then there is Dusong Je. And then Tisong Detsen. Then um, to give a drum temper. And then Kumari Penchen Pema Wangil. And then the scholar of Nepal, uh, Bedor. And then Kache Gwempawa. And Sajin Kunga Nyingbo. It's like a master Kunganyingbo. And Durgun Yudapa. And Yasang Chomin. And then Yishi Sung. And then Haji Gewabum. And then the Sakya Lineage Holder. Zumba Dakchin Lodri Gelsen. Rinchin Kendra, and then the founder of Depung Monastery, Jamyang Cheje, and then and 
then the series, the line of Dalai Lamas, Gendun Drup, Gendun Gyatso, Zenam Gyatso, Yendin Gyatso, and then 50 Dalai Lama, Ngawang Lopsan Gyatso, 60 Dalai Lama, Tanyan Gyatso, 7th Dalai Lama, Gyatso, 8th Dalai Lama. Ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, and then the fourteenth Dalai Lama. was written by the late Gavji Tushi Rinpoche. So next we will see the mandala offering. So we will say a few uh, stanzas as a request prayer. This ground anointed for mandala offering. This is ground. This ground anointed with perfumes strewn with flowers and adorned with Mount Mary, four continents and sun and moon. I imagine as a Buddha land and offer to you. May all beings enjoy this pure land.
lion throne upon the moon. Lotus May you, Venerable Master, Filled of merit and faith for us, may you remain for each hundred eons to flourish the Dharma, for the Dharma to flourish. Source of all benefits and happiness. Gender is sick, the Lord, gender is sick in person, and in Gatsu. May you live until the end of samsara. Tev Dangbudin sermiş. So when Jaman Kinti Shogulotu came to Tibet, uh, Jolhasa from Kham, uh, I didn't know this before initially, but there was one monk who was a uh, chant master of uh, Namgyal Monastery, and then he, after uh, 59, uh, he was imprisoned for 18 or 19 years. And after that, he came to India, he, he escaped or he f uh, came to Tib uh, from Tibet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So his Holiness is asking which settlement where he was from. He was once working uh, in road building in Kulu region of Himachal Pradesh. He's 84 years old. He's praying for his Holiness to link belong. 
And so when this monk, uh, the chant, the chant master, when he came from Tibet, he brought this prayer by Jamyan Kinsa Shagalot. He told me that when he was in prison uh, in the Chinese in Chinese Golak, uh, he actually uh, wrote this prayer in, uh, in his hands and. Uh, Others, uh, prison inmates also were uh, doing this, and they, uh, they were saying this prayer. And so many of those people who actually suffered under the Chinese, um, who suffered greatly under the Chinese occupation, made this fervent prayer. So this prayer uh, is very good in terms of its meaning. The prayer for the 14th incarnation of the victorious Supreme Great Omniscient. It's called the sweet melody of immortal nectar. Om Swasti, embodiment of the great loving wisdom of all the victorious ones gathered in one white like a snow mountain, emanation body of the exalted supreme lord of the world. May the Lama of the three rams migrate us be victorious. In the three worlds you are matchless and marvelous, exalted with, like the Udamwara flower omniscient one. Great crowning jewel of those who follow the doctrine in this world. Supreme victorious lotus holder, please remain firmly with us. Although you have been a real Buddha since the beginning, in these times of conflicts your hands tightly hold all migrators. Your resolve and promise your resolve and promise are as firm as a Vajra, great lord of the tenth stage. Please remain firmly with us. You possess all the understanding of the gradual path to enlightenment, inseparably merged with your three secrets. Your good qualities of knowledge and love are inconceivable, second capable one of the northern direction of the northern land. Please remain firmly with us. You encounter no obstacles in explanation, debate and composition. Your eight great treasures of confidence are totally unbound. You show the doctrine with perfect individual awareness. Great one, victorious in all the directions, please remain firmly with us. With a wheel of explanation, practice and activity, you spread the precious doctrine of the victorious Lozantapa in a great in a hundred directions, confounding the evil opponents, the Mara's elephants. Fearless line of speech, please remain firmly with us. Gradually following that path of secret mantra, the three visions of the three tantras, with the profound yoga of the four power empowerments, you dissolve the four gates. You have directly attained the wisdom of the four bodies, all pervading, powerful holder of the Vajra. Please remain firmly with us. By the sun of the in innate wisdom of non dual profundity and clarity, Mahamudra, the actual mode of abiding in all of all things, you dispel the darkness of samsara and nirvana. Yogi, great Lord, please remain firmly with us. You lead the generous flow of the four maturing and liberating rivers, the treasure of all the secrets of the ocean of tantras, into the fields of those fortunate ones to be subdued. Honor of the holder of secrecy, please remain firmly with us. All phenomena of samsara and nirvana appear as the play of interdependence. Though they appear so, they have been unborn and well pacified from the very beginning. Skillful teacher of the profound p middle path, free from all elaborations, Lord of the Nagas, please remain firmly with us. The lineage bearer, the lineage bearer Pundarika, the Kulika Pandarik Pundarika, the erudite teacher of perfectly perfectly expounded who perfectly profounded, expounded the inseparability of the outer inner and other the alternate color chakra manifest as manifested as the virtuous as a virtuous friend in the country of Tibet essence of the primordial Buddha please remain firmly with us all phenomena of samsara and nirvana are contained in the deep center of the clear light drop the great perfection spontaneously devoid of decrease or increase. You have reached the city of the fruit through inaction and self-freedom. All good 
primordial protector. Please remain firmly with us. In short, you her heroically pull your, with your hands the great chariots of the Buddha's whole doctrine without confounding them. So refuge of the doctrine and all migrators. Lord Denton Gyatso, please remain firmly with us. The crown jewel of the great ones in the three worlds. Pay homage a hundred times with respect and awe to his auspicious wheels of your lotus feet. Great king of the doctrine, please remain firmly with us. Lord of the gods, cutting through the Maras and Ash Ashura's power. Destroy, destroyer of the rocky mountain of bad views and wrong views. With a hundred pronged Vajra of strength, power and force. Fearsome, glorious Heruka, please remain firmly with us. As long as the earth, Mount Meru, the sun and the moon, and during the conceivable mansion of the changing sec three secrets, the Patala, please. The Patala pleasing to the government, please remain firmly and permanently upon the Vajra throne by the blessings of the three supreme immortal deities and by the power of the truth of the Lamas, Yidams, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas. We ask blessings for the aims thus requested to be accomplished without obstacles. And next. Uh, we'll see the prayers uh, of long life written by Dada Rambuchi and uh, then the long life prayer uh, of His Holiness written by the two uh, late tutors. And then we'll say the uh, prayer for the flourishing of the Dharma, written by His Holiness, and then the words of truth at the end of the teaching in the afternoon. Oh, 
This is a song of immortality on the Swasti, O Gurus, O our Gurus and your lines of lamas, from whom we have the deepest gratitude, for whom we have the deepest gratitude to you who are the depository of the three secrets of innumerable Buddhas, who miraculously manifest according to each devotee's capacity, to you who are the wish fulfilling gems, the source of all virtues and good qualities. We offer our prayers with intense devotion that Denzin Gyatso, the protector of the land of snows, may live for a hundred years. Pour him on him your blessings that his, has, his aspirations may be fulfilled. The Dharma Datu, the inexpressible reality which pervades all things like the heavens, immaculate, full of great bliss and transcendental wisdom, manifest like a cloud to the numberless abodes of the higher divinities, the mandalas of the heavenly beings, to all higher forms of divine ones, the yidhams. We offer our prayers with intense devotion that Denton Gyatso, protector of the land of snows, may live for a hundred years. Pour on him your blessings that his aspirations may be fulfilled. O oh, you, numberless Buddhas of the past, present, and future, who are the masters of the ten powers and teachers of the gods, whose attributes of perfection, free from defilements, and are and born of realization are the source of the Buddha activity, which appears for all time in the ocean of the suffering of the world for the sake of all beings. All sentient beings, we offer our prayers with intense devotion that Denton Gyatso, the protector of the land of snows, may live for a hundred eons. Pour on him your blessings for that his aspirations may be fulfilled. O the sacred Dharma of the Tiryanas, which liberate us from the sufferings of three worlds, supremely calm, the jewel treasure of the fully enlightened ones, without impurities, unchanging, eternally good, this peak of virtues, we offer our prayers with intense devotion that Denton Gyatso, protector of the land of snows, may live for a hundred eons. For on him your blessings that his aspirations may be fulfilled. O oh, all you Arya Sangha, awakened and unsullied of highest valor in 
conquering the suffering of the wheel of life with the transcendental wisdom that directly intuits the deeper truth, never departing from the indestructible Vajra abode of the Nirvana, we offer our prayer with intense devotion that Tenzin Gyatso, the product of the land of snows, may live for a hundred eons. Pour on him your blessings that his aspirations may be fulfilled. O oh, you Dakas and Dakinis, heavenly beings of the three worlds, who appear in the highest paradises, the sacred places, the cremation grounds, who have innumerable experiences of bliss and void, supporting the yogi in their meditation on the excellent path to you, we offer our prayers with intense devotion that Tintin Gyatso, protector of the land of snows, may live for a hundred years. Pour on him your blessings that his aspirations may be fulfilled to the ocean of guardians of the teaching who possess the eye of transcendental, and transcendental wisdom, carrying on your matted locks, then not symbolic of the vows they made, you made to the Vajra Dara Buddha, the powerful ones who protect the teaching and upholders of the Dharma, we pray. offer our prayers with intense devotion that Tintin Gyatso, protector of the land of snows, may live for a hundred eons. Pour on him your blessings that his aspirations may be fulfilled. To all you gui guileless ones in whom we take the excellent refuge, we pray with intense devotion, humble from our very heart that by the strength of these verses, the only protector of the snowland migrators, he who has power over speech, the kindly one, upholder of the Dharma, the great ocean, he who possesses the great secret, three secret powers, may be indestructible, eternal, and without end, that seated on the supreme unconquerable throne of the Vajra, he may live for a hundred years. You who bear the burdens of innumerable Buddhas, with courage carrying on your shoulders, the vast activities of the fully enlightened ones, working for the wheel of all beings, like the fish full Filling <laughs> the well-being of all beings, like the wish fulfilling gem, the jewel of jewels, may your aspirations be perfectly fulfilled by the blessings of the wondrous Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, by the unsalable truths of the spiritual laws, and of course, and effect by the unsusta unsustained power of the pure mind, may the aims of my prayers, our prayers, soon be accomplished. The law of rain, this land, anointed with this ground, anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, adorned with my mirror, four continents, the sun and the moon, I imagine as a Buddha land, and offer to you, may all beings enjoy this pure land. Next is the prayer for the flourishing of the non sectarian Tibetan Buddhist traditions.
This is the prayer for the flourishing of uh, all the different sects of the Buddhism, Buddha's teaching in Tibet. homage to the masters through the contact, the vast contact, and also the profound wisdom emptiness, uh, the great master of Atisha. And uh, may those teachings of Buddha in Tibet flourish. The teachings of Buddha, which is the combination of three baskets of teachings, and which has been condensed into the practice of three different kinds of personalities and the teachings of the Buddha which contains the seven qualities and uh, such a kind of teaching may flourish. The great translator Mava and Doji and so on and the lineage of uh, blessings and also the Kagyu traditions and with irrespective of all the traditions May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. And next is the prayer for the Nyingma traditions. Next is the praise for Lama Tsongkhapa's teachings, which is the combination of the vast contact practices and the profound emptiness practices, which has been combined together and uh, which has been taught in such a very well manner so that the devotees uh, are very able to practice in very swift manner. So, such, a kind, such as these teachings of Lama Tsongkhapa may flourish. The teachings which are prevalent in Tibet, which are the contents, which contains the contents meaning of the three baskets, and also in terms of Vajrayana, the four uh, different, all the kinds of uh, schools, and uh, the order and the nature of all the paths, and which has been shown unmistakably. So in summary, all the ten different kinds of lineages and uh, uh, the great teachings coming through the two twelve blazers and also the teachings which are very rich rich with both sutra and tantric practices so such kind of teachings of the Buddha may flourish and all the great masters who uphold the teachings of the Buddha may they live for a very long life and also the teachings be spread to all parts of the world and may all the spirits of the entire realm of the space be filled with the practitioners of Dharma and may all parts of the world, may there be, may the peace prevail and there won't be any instances of violent. And may the, just the name of violent and uh, hatred and anger be eliminated, be vanished from the sphere of the world. And may I also from now on be guided by the great masters and may I be also able to practice 
the great parts and the teachings shown by these great masters, including about the was contact and the profound emptiness. And may I be able to practice with listening, concentrating, and through meditating into this great text. And to may all the sentient beings be able to attain the state of Buddhahood. And in order to attain the highest form of the Buddhahood, may they, may they be free from the obstacles such as procrastination and laziness. And may they be able to engage in the practice with great aspiration and uh, joy. And uh, my body and uh, my speech and all the my wealth, may I dedicate all this to the benefit for all the sentient beings and may it become a cause for the generating happiness to all. And may all the sufferings that are existing in this world may all be a prey on me and uh, may all these sufferings come to an existence. And uh, may, as long as the space remains and as long as the sentient being remains, may I too remain and with directly or indirectly be able to benefit all the sentient beings. There is a small text here. Uh, it appears as the lineage, the praise for the lineage master of Sakya is missing here. I think it's important that we have to make, a, we have to examine here. I find that the pray, the praise for the Sakya tra tradition masters are missing. There is one sense or one verse missing between here. I find that uh, it's missing. I have written two two stanzas for all the traditions, and uh, here I find that there is uh, five stanzas, five uh, sentence for one verses, and so you must uh, examine, you must check with the originals, and you must uh, check and correct it. Otherwise, it will be a big mistake that it is printed to a large volume. So still, there is about 20 minutes to 11.30. So I think it's clearly there is 15 minutes left. So shall I read from the remaining of the teachings? When the Lamrim Shimo, the great traders of Bantu Enlightenment, and the patient number, I didn't. So here the two Amdos are trying to show some special magic powers. It's okay now. When the patient number 102, Lamrim Chemo, the explanation of the process of learning the precepts, the explanation of the process of learning the precepts of two parts, how to train in the Mayana in general, and uh, how to train specifically in the Vajrayana, how to train in the Mayana in general, the explanation of how to train in the Mayana in generation as three sections. Establishing the desire to learn the precepts of the spirit of enlightenment in the discipline of individual liberation in, in Tantra. I think it's not right. Maybe I make a mistake. I think I followed the it yesterday. I followed it that yesterday. So actually the English translation text is correct. Shabala, 
explanation of the process of learning the precept, the explanation of the process of learning the precept of two parts, how to train the Mayana in general, and how to train specifically in the Vajrayana, how to train in the Mayana in general, establishing the desire to learn the precepts of the spirit of enlightenment, taking the vows of conquerors' children after establishing the desire to learn the precepts, how to train after taking the vows. Establishing the desire to learn the precepts of the spirit of enlightenment in the discipline of individual liberation and in Tantra. It is inappropriate to study the precepts before you have first taken the vows. But these Bodhisattva vows are different. First, you understand the precepts well, and then after you are training them, you have an enthusiasm for taking them beyond. The text uh, is existing in Tibetan translation is about uh, six volumes, but in Chinese uh, translation I think it's even more volumes, so in future we may have to examine these translations. And uh, Mamo here refers to the Bodhisattva levels, composed, uh, written by Asanga. In this regard, the Bodhisattva level says for persons wanting to take the ethical discipline vows of a Bodhisattva, you must first make known and advance the fundamental precepts and the source of all of Bodhisattvas taught here in the summary of Bodhisattva fundamentals for the Bodhisattva scriptural collection of the discourses. If after sincere investigation and intelligent analysis, these persons are inspired, and if it is not because of being made to do it by someone else, and it is not to complete, compete with others, then know that these are reliable bodhisattvas. This person should be given the vows of ethical discipline and should receive them in a court with the ritual. This is a very good method because if you understand the precepts, bring them to mind, establish a wish to train in them from the depths of your heart, then take the vows and you will be extremely constant. And from here, taking the vows of the conquered children after establishing the desire to learn the precepts. I've already established in detail in my basic part of awakening commentary on the bodhisattvas levels chapter on ethical discipline. First, how to take the bodhisattva vows immediately after that, how to guard against fundamental transgressions and transgressions which constitute minor infractions and then how to repair vows if they degenerate. It is most definitely necessary that you read this before you take the vows to understand them from the how to train after the taking of vows is three. What the precepts are based upon, they are limitless clear categorizations, but if you arrange the Bodhisattva precepts by type, you can include them all within the six perfections. The six perfections are thus great condensation of all the key points of the Bodhisattva path. There are four ways to gather disciples. Generosity, pleasant speech, working at aims, and consistency of behavior are also included within the six perfections as follows. That generosity is included as obvious. A place in a speech is giving instructions to desirable taking the cis perfection as the point of departure. Working at aims is establishing others in the aim of the instructions and the consistency of behavior is practicing just as the desirable does. We are on page number 104. How all the precepts are included in cis perfections. A discussion of the main topic, the fixed number of perfections. The Bhagavan formulated a bare outline of the six perfections and holy religion to produce certain knowledge of these by explicating it in the code with Buddha's intended meaning the key points of the rationale for formulating the perfections in that fashion. This explanation showed that there is a fixed number of perfections. When you are convinced of this and astonished by it, he will understand the practice of six perfections as the supreme instruction, so obtain such conviction. The discussion of the main topic, the fixed number of perfections as its part, the fixed number of perfections based on high status, uh, based on fulfilling the two aims, based on perfecting the complete fulfillment of others' aim, based on their self summing the entire Mayana, in terms of completeness of the paths or methods, based on three trainings, the fixed number of perfection based on high status to fully complete the greatly effect, effective bodhisattva deeds, you need to you need an immeasurably long succession of lifetimes. Moreover, to attain quick success on the path within these lifetimes, you need a life excellent in every aspect. Our present life is not excellent in every aspect, but the rather has only some of the aspects of full excellence. If we do not make progress with it. Though we practice the teachings, you need a life that has four kinds of excellence, resources to use, a body with which you act, companions together with whom you act, a work that you are able to accomplish once undertaken, 
since in many cases these kinds of excellences alone may themselves become conditioned for afflictions, you must not fall under the control of afflictions. As just the four kinds of excellences are not sufficient, you must also distinguish well in regard to what to adopt and what to cast aside, precisely what things to do and to stop doing. Otherwise, just as a bamboo or a plantain tree dies after giving fruit or a mule dies with pregnancy, you will be destroyed by the four excellences. The wise understand how they seek the four excellences. Control of the afflictions and the knowledge of what to adopt and what to cast aside are the results of earlier virtuous actions, and they strive again and steadily increasing their causes. The unwise use the result of the earlier accumulations of the virtue and exhaust them as they do not increase the manual, they reach the brink of their future suffering. When you again produce these seeds in future lives, their production will not be causeless or from discordant causes, but rather from concordant causes that are perfections. Fixture 6 in number, therefore in this lifetime, you must repeatedly habituate yourself to constant reliance on the six perfections because the superiority of the effect is commensurate to the superiority of the causes. A life, a life with the four excellences constitute temporary high status, whereas the ultimate high status, which consists of ultimate excellences of body extra, exists as the Buddha level. Thus the ornament says, Ornament for the Mayana Sutra says, High status possessed of excellent resources and body, excellent companions and undertakings, not going under the power of afflictions and never being mistaken and activated. It's the first number of perfections based on fulfilling the two aims. When someone in such a life of high status learns the Bodhisattva deeds, these activities are comprehensively categorized as two those which fulfill your own aim and those which fulfill the aim of others. Therefore, there is a fixed number of perfections based on fulfilling the two aims. To fulfill the aims of others, you must first help them with material goods, since no benefit will come from generosity accompanied by harmfulness towards living beings. You need ethical discipline, which is a great purpose of others in that it is the state of desisting from harm to others and causes of such harm. To bring this to its full development and also need patience that disregards the harm done to you or if you are impatient with harm and retaliate a time or two, you will not attain pure ethical discipline. When you do not retaliate because of your patience, you prevent others from accumulating a great amount of sin and bring them to virtue by inspiring them with your patience. So this practice has a great purpose for, their, for others. You attain your own aim, the bliss of liberation, through the power of wisdom. Since you will not attain this with a distracted mind, you must set your mind in meditative equipoise by means of meditative stabilization, obtaining a mental serviceability, wherein you intentionally set your attention on any object of medication. Since a lazy person does not produce this unit, joys, perseverance, day and night, that never slackens. So this is the basis of the other perfections. For accomplishing the two aims, then the number of perfections is fixed as six. The ornament for the Mayana Sutra says, those who strive for the aims of beings work at giving known harm and patience when completely fulfill their own aims with stabilization and liberation together with their basis. In this six, there is no complete fulfillment of other aims. The mention of stabilization and liberation differentiates between the two as the stabilization of the mind and the object of medication. This being the imprint of the meditative stabilization and the liberation from silent existence. This being the imprint of wisdom. Notice that this does not mistake meditative serenity for insight. As this is so, those who assert that the meditation of fixing one's attention in the absence of conceptual thought is meditation on the profound or speaking of a meditation that is a single portion of meditative stabilization that is one of the six perfections. You must attain certain knowledge of the six perfections in their entirely, entirety. The fixed number of perfections based on perfecting the complete fulfillment of other aims. You first relieve others' poverty by giving away material goods, then you do no harm by any living being. In addition, are patient with harm tend to you. Without becoming dispirited, you just preserve at helping those who harm you, you depend on. And here the wisdom refers to the wisdom which comprehends the no selfness on the phenomenon. Through relieving others' poverty, not harming them, being patient with their harm, not being dispirited with what they do, delighting them and speaking well to them, you fulfill others' aims which fulfills your own. 
This verse, together with the one Abu, says that it is not possible to fulfill others in your aims without relying on the six perfections. Once you are certain about the way in which you fulfill your own and others' same through the six perfections, you will have respect for the practice of them. The fixed number of perfection based on their subsuming the entire Mayana. You are indifferent to resources because you are not attached to those you have and do not pursue those you lack. Page number 108. The fixed number of perfection in terms of completeness of paths or methods. The path that is a method for not being attached to the resources that are your possession is generosity. Because you become free from attachment to your things but become habituated to giving them away. The method for restraining yourself from the distraction of trying to possess what you do not possess is ethical discipline for you when you maintain amongst vows you do not have all the distractions of making a living. The method for not abandoning living beings is patience because you do not despair at the suffering caused by harm others inflict. The method to increase virtues is joyous perseverance because you increase them when you joyously persevere at what you undertake. The methods for clearing away obscurations are the final two perfections because meditative stabilization clears away the afflictions and wisdom clears away the cognitive obscurations. Thus, the perfections are fixed six in number, the ornament for Mayana Sutra states. Non-attachment to object is a path, another is restraint from the destruction of obtaining them, not ab abandoning beings, increasing virtues, and clearing away the obscurations are others. Page number 109. The fixed number of perfections based on three trainings, the nature of Page number 109, second last paragraph. Furthermore, there are two causes of non initially transcending or rising about daily existence attachment to resources and attachment to a home. The remedies for this are generosity and ethical discipline, respectively. You may rise above this attachment once still turned back without reaching the end. There are two causes of this suffering from the wrongdoing of living beings and becoming disparated at the length of time you have pursued virtue. The remedies for this are patience and joyous perseverance, respectively. Once you understand how to sustain a disregard for all sufferings and harm, as well as an enthusiasm which views even an eternity as though it were one day, you must practice them in various, various ways. If you do this, you will produce the patience and joyous perseverance that are capable of functioning as remedies to what causes you to turn back. Thus, they are extremely crucial, never mind the matter of the Buddhists of this, even with regard to present cultivation of virtue, there are many who start out by few who do not turn back after a while because the forbearance for the slightest hardship is tiny and their enthusiasm for the path they cultivate is tepid. This is the result of their not putting into practice the personal instructions associated with patience and joyous perseverance. There are two causes for letting your virtue go to waste, even if you do not turn back after a while. Distraction wherein your attention does not stabilize on the virtuous object of meditation and uh, faulty wisdom. The remedies for this are meditative stabilization and wisdom respectively. Meditative stabilization is a remedy because it is said that even virtuous practices such as repetition of mantra and daily recitations are senses if your attention wanders elsewhere. Wisdom is a remedy because if you fail to develop the wisdom that fully delineates the topic in collections of the Buddhist knowledge, you will be mistaken about what to adopt and what to cast aside, even the obvious, and will then contact yourself wrongly. This fixes the number of perfection that are six in terms of there being remedies that eliminate the class of phenomena that are incompatible with virtue. The number of perfection is fixed at six based on the fact that they are a foundation for achieving every quality of a Buddha. So we're on page number 111. Let's stop here for a while. So mental offering to thanking Master for giving us the great teaching. In a quick way, I will repeat the announcement once again. The teachings will begin at Dripung Losaling Prayer Hall tomorrow morning at the same time. Seat reservations at Dripung Losaling Prayer Hall will open tonight at approximately 7 p.m. The foreign